Or this is my shed, it lives by a hedge in my tiny little yard. Swear you're here as Harbin on, so come join us for a chat in my shed. Welcome to Shed TV. I'm uh, Pastor Mike Taylor from Faith Church in Rodstone, and I've got my good mate, Pastor Paul Van Essen, with me from... Uh, wherever I'm from. from wherever you're from. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I've forgotten the name of your church. Uh, it's called Greater Life Church. Greater Life Church, That's yeah. It. So, uh, Shed TV, this is something that I did in lockdown, and it's great to, to be doing it again, and just having my friends just come and have a chat about our faith about what we believe uh, God's saying to us as a church, where we think the church is going in Wales in the UK. So, Paul, do you just want to introduce yourself, seeing as I've so poorly done it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I've been here, I've, my accent, you can probably tell, of, you know anyway, it's Australian, but I've been here for 24 years, mm. and uh, I was worked as a leader and a pastor in a very big church in Sydney for a number of years and then came here. And uh, I'm really, uh, the, the shape the spiritual shape of the nation of the United Kingdom, England, Wales, and a lot of Western Europe as well is really changed since I've been here. So I'm pastoring over there, leading a church in Staines yep. called Greater Life Church. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but love coming to Wales. So does Ali G come to your church? No, he doesn't. Oh, no. no, he tried to, but tried I wouldn't to. let him. Okay. No, we only have good-looking people. Oh, good-looking. <laughs> we should have come in shell suits, shouldn't we? Really? <laughs> so you know, you, you've been in ministry. 25 years? 30. 30 years? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've seen a lot of changes. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So from uh, like uh, the kind of big mega church kind of thing through to, to what you're doing now, because your first church, your first network you involved, that was quite a large network of churches, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So I was, I was just, uh, we just had really a move of God, you know, what you'd call a move of God. Yeah. Back in uh, the early 80s yeah. in Sydney. So... Our church was led by a young man, early 30s, and within five, seven years, we had 5,000 odd people. Wow. I became a pastor there and led the Bible college. And so that was a very a wonderful experience, but a bit atypical, you know, a unique experience. That isn't what happens for most people. Yeah. Um, and then when we came here, we kind of started a church with the same group of people and we had a fair bit of momentum and some very exciting things and then life unraveled as it does. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and now we're in a situation where most of, you know, most of the Western world is, where we have a church of less than 100 people, which is about, what, 80% of the world goes to a church of less yeah. than that, or 80% of the churches are. And uh, and so it's been a great experience and, uh, yeah, you learn a lot as you go along. Yeah, because, I like, my parents... Um, like got into church in that eighties kind of period, mm -hmm. you know. So my my memories of early church are of big church gatherings and in tents and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of that charismatic move, you know. And yes, and, and church, but church has gone on a, on a journey, hasn't it? You know, um, we've gone from that. We went through, you know, like for a season of being quite well produced, quite professional, yeah, uh, which w was good. But I think you know, be good to talk about. COVID, I think almost as they call it the Great Reset. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's a great term. I don't know what you think, mm. but I think the whole um, dynamic of church has changed. Yeah, I think it has, and I think it needed to. Yeah, you know, I think God, God is always trying to bring the church into a place that glorifies Him and it effectively reaches the world and yeah. sees those people built. And like anything, you know, when there's a move of the Spirit. So in the early 80s, we had what we probably call the mega church kind of emphasis. Um, and that did some certain great things, but you can't have one model, you know, that works all the time. And COVID did. It did reset the church. It, it, and we're not through it yet in terms of the fallout of that. But I think uh, if we adapt well, if we hear what the Spirit yeah. of God is saying and, and adapt well, we can see some really positive changes. Yeah. So, like, I know we've talked lots, but like, how, how do you like? How would in in your thirty years of ministry, how would you evaluate health of church? So, I, I know there was a big move about numbers. Sure. But, but from from your wisdom and your experience, what would you say would be a healthy church? I think. I think that he church health is more important than church numbers, that's right. for sure. Um, I think that the whole numbers thing, so to speak, and it, that sounds, you know, a little bit down downgrading, which I don't really want to be, but um, I think the emphasis on how many people are in the building, how many people got saved, how much money came in, 
all that stuff, which is a big part of that world, you know, yeah. which I've lived in for, for plenty of time. Um, like anything that can have an excess, that's yeah. unhealthy. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes the fallout of that is that the name of the church starts to become bigger than the name of Jesus. I'm always cons a bit concerned about that. Um, and I think sometimes people start to feel like a number instead of authentically commun uh, you know, com com yeah, committed yeah. to. So when I think about what you're doing, one of the great things that's happening in Newport for you guys is the sense of community that's in there and the connection you have with so many different aspects. Yeah. And I, I think that's crucial right now. Well, I, I read a book just before. Well, I didn't. I don't read books because I'm not a great reader, but I listened to a book mm -hmm. um, called Not in God's Name by the Rabbi of London. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talks about um, the dynamic of us as humans and uh, research, sociology um, re research has proven that we don't, we, if you get over like 250 people, there has to be some control of it, mm -hmm. you know, and they go back through history and study it. And um, I, I, look at the, I look at the church and I look, you know, having been in big churches and small churches, there's, there's a shift in dynamic once you get over a certain number. Sure. And um, not that one's right and one's wrong, and, and I, but I do think, because um, I, 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 what's been on my heart for, for Wales uh, is that we need to restore the church back to its rightful place in community. Mm -hmm. like it needs to be at the heart, it needs to be at the center, and it needs to be a place of belonging. Um, and, and I don't know whether we can do that if we become too big. Sure. You know? Yeah, no, I, th I think that's true. And I think the reality is that there are going to be some big churches. So even if you read the New Testament, yeah. you know, there's a handful of churches. They were larger. Antioch, where a lot of stuff kicked off. Yeah. Um, and Barnabas came over to kind of look after that. And then Paul came in there. That, that was a, you know, a large and significant group. But historically, all the way through, most of these things have been small. Most of Christian people uh, meet in a community and we need that. So I think we need a handful of, of you know, uh, when I say handful, I mean how many. Yeah, yeah. But you need some, some things. There are some things that big churches can do yeah. um, that other churches will struggle to do. Yeah. But I think that... What's happened, certainly in my experience, is that it became so important, the numbers, that everybody was striving to get reach more people, not because they loved people so much, yeah, yeah, but yeah. just it's better to have 200 than it is 150. Yeah. And by this time next year, our goal is we're going to have 500 and, we, you know, and all those kinds of yeah. things. And, and the downside of that is that's just not what everybody is made for. It's yeah. just, in fact, most leaders and ministers are not called or created or, or shaped to be a, a pastor of a massive church. So I remember we talked about, you know, when we first got here, yeah. we brought some. I used to run the, the Bible college there in Australia. And it was pretty significant, you know, one of the more influential Bible colleges because it was attached to this large church in Sydney. And, and, uh, and so I had a bunch of students that came with me and they stayed anything from a year to a few years. Some stayed longer. Uh, and we so we, we kind of hit the ground running. And within a few years, we had a couple of hundred people, you know, and, and it was all very exciting, you know, and people think this is, you know, news yeah. and all this jazz. But the, when we used to think about where do we go from here, I remember thinking and sharing with the leaders at the time, I think I'm more comfortable with the idea of maybe four or five churches that maybe have 100 or 200 people that have a healthy connection. Yeah rather than just having one big mega centre, you know. And I think everybody's got to work that out. Yeah. Because you could, works for them. like, you know, my dream for Faith Church is that we will be, uh, a, I don't like the word network, like a collection. Mm -hmm. a, a collective. <laughs> a collective, a rabble, hopefully, mm -hmm. of communities yeah. that, I don't know, every, once or twice a year we can get together and there'd be like a thousand people or whatever. Yeah. But we go back and we express our faith in community. Sure. Because, yep. you know, I, I look at, one, the geography of Wales, like lots of small towns, there's not yep. many big places, you know, and and I, I just think that there just needs to be a, a, um, a stronger expression of the Father heart of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, I, and I think for us in Wales and for our setting, we can do that for a smaller community. Mm -hmm. You know, and like for me, I've been pastoring 13 years. You can spend your whole life like chasing the goal of bigger numbers and this and that, but I'm coming at peace about what is the essence of what we're called to be. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. You know, and the essence of what Faith Church is called to be is to be a great family. Yep. 
uh, so that 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 will naturally put limitations on how big we are. Yeah. But that's the grace on us. And exactly. Like, and like you say, they're the other people's graces are to have churches of over a thousand. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the challenge for a lot of those bigger churches, I, I've been to, you know, lots of these conferences. Yeah. And in those early years, we had we had all the, you know, big names. Lester Summerall came over, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland. They were yeah. all there. We were having conferences back in the green room, you know. And yeah, yeah. you've got the people that are in and the people that are out and all that kind of carry on. But one of the things that, that has hit me over the years, and I've spoken to other leaders about that, is that we have to ask ourselves if the majority of churches are somewhere between 50 and 100 people, if that's what most people are, which means that most of the leaders of those churches are either living fairly tight financially yeah. or doing other things. How helpful is it if you go to a conference yeah. put on by somebody with a church of 20,000 yeah, yeah. in terms of help on these guys? It's a very exciting event. But I think what we're what, what I'm kind of dreaming and what I hear in your heart yeah. is that we have to reach people, but you can't... You, you, if you haven't got the experience of going through that stuff um, and being there, then how helpful are we really? Yeah. So there's some rethinking going on. I remember being on a, a call in, in the middle of COVID with, with a, a, great, a great evangelist, but you know, his church is thousands. And, and he's telling us how they're getting through COVID as a church of a th- couple of thousand. And I'm like, it's just little old me. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've, COVID's here. I've got to learn how to do online church. Yep. It's coming out of my living room. Yep. My kids are the sound engineers and the dog's running through the middle of it all. And, yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm like, this has no point of reference for me. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, I've been to some great conferences and heard some great speakers. But it's the point of reference is so far away from where I'm at, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it'd be it'd be great. To, I would love the day when I go to a conference and the guy that stands up has only got twenty people. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and and I, 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 there's that would be great. But also, we do need to be challenged to move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and, and I've you know one of the challenges that I have is you you go to a conference or whatever and it and it's slick and it's well produced and a high level of excellence. Yeah. And then you come back to your uh, our churches yeah, yeah, yeah. with a minute budget, yeah, yeah. trying to trying to do excellence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how do you think that kind of excellence thing is for me and you? You know, in our context, well, I, th- I think that I think excellence is really important. Yeah. And uh, when I was first saved, so I became a Christian in the kind of late seventies, and uh, and then in the early eighties, and we were involved in uh, our church there made the, what was the kind of first. Christian released CD, worship okay. CD thing in, that was in Australia and then others did that as well. And, um, and I remember like the byword for anything church was, you know, second rate. Yeah. Everything was cheap and nasty. In fact, in fact there was a, even with missionaries, you know, I remember one, one mate of mine over there and they would, they're sending support to missionaries and one lady brought in used tea bags. <laughs> True story. So she'd use them once. <laughs> And then send them over. And so that whole idea of cheap, second rate, you know, that was such a problem. Yeah, yeah. And God really did something phenomenal in yeah. regard to that. And so the excellence, and it is important, but you can't, you can't do what you can't do. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I think I wonder whether some of these uh, larger churches, if they can learn to work with or embrace and champion smaller yeah. situations and lend what they have, as it were. Yeah, yeah. That's one option. And then relationships, you know, in that context becomes important. But the other thing is too, is that people love authenticity. Yeah. And they need community and they need love. You know, yeah. if I if I had one kind of one thing maybe above everything else in my heart is that we've we've got to learn Christians have we have to learn to walk really in love, in agape love. Yeah. And genuine. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's got to be real. I, yeah. So I, I was with a with, with a guy the other day who's lost two close relatives in a short, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, you want to go in and say, oh, I understand. Well, I haven't got no idea. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, but yeah. what I do have is I have a faith. Yeah. yeah. You know, and um, I, I don't really know how this whole thing works, but I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe that you can have peace, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I think for so, like, so long, Christians and the church has tried to say it's got the answer. Yeah, yeah like as in the practical answer, but sometimes we don't. All we have is a faith. Yeah, yeah. All we have is we believe in a Jesus that can make the emotions and the environment of that situation change. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Yep, that makes sure, sense? You totally. Know? Like, I don't know what it's like 
to go through some of these things that the people are in my world. But what I do know is that I've been under huge amounts of stress or huge amounts of pressure or grief or whatever. And I, pr I pray to God and it changes it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what, I think f for me, that's what Wales needs. That's what yeah. this nation needs. It, it needs a group of Christians that say, we, we don't understand, but what we do have is something that can change your, emo like your emotions, your environment. Do you mean? Sure, yeah, absolutely. You know? And you've got it. See, when you're interfacing with the community, that's that big passion of yours. Yeah. You know, whether you're coaching rugby or whether you're, yeah, you know, yeah. down at the, what's that place called? Tiny Rebel. Door? Yeah, Tiny Rebel next door down <laughs> Do the road. we get free beers if we promote yeah. them? <laughs> <laughs> or all that kind of stuff that, that you guys do. It's like the whole generation, because one of the things we've got to think about too is youth, younger yeah. people. And, you know, their excellence is like, because they grew up with that, it, it can look inauthentic. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm a yeah, big yeah, yeah. fan of excellence, but if people feel genuine love and the power of God in a place and a sense of community, they'll come, you know, whether and it's excellent or not I, I, my, in that sense. I think of my son, like he's 16, 16 and a half. I think of the world that he's growing up in mm -hmm. where so many things are so fluid. Yeah. You know, um, you know, to talk to him about become a Christian and you, you get to spend eternity with God, is, he's the Red Bull generation. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I can jump out of planes and I survive anyway. But yeah, yeah. you know, like we that that message that we that we share, like that was a very good post-war message. You know, a lot of people came back from the war. People didn't. Lots of people died. They needed a, a gospel message that was you know believe in God and you can have eternal life. Yeah. This younger generation coming through. Yeah doesn't mean an awful lot to them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. need to say Christianity is about living uh, with a, a greater sense of community, a greater sense of belonging, and, mm -hmm. an, and a crazy life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, me and my family have traveled around the world because of our faith. You, you know? have, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been and through, me, yeah. yeah. we've been through some crazy stuff because yeah. of our faith. Um, because, you know, we want to be different. We want to live on the edge. And I, and I think that's the gospel message that needs to be coming through to a younger generation. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. Because their world is so fluid, you yeah. know. And I think, yeah, I think, and in, we, we, in the midst of that too, you've got just this need of love, you know, this, and I, I push that a lot, but it's so important, like agape love, what Jesus demonstrated and talked about is not what we normally think love is, like I love you or I, yeah. I love pizza. It's a different deal. It's a, it's a selfless thing yeah. that works by the power of God, not by just being, trying to be a good Christian. Yeah. And, um, and that generation, you're right, it's like all about action, it's all about instant. all the solid things that many of the older generation grew up with, like mum and dad and the kids, yeah. that's just gone. It's gone, yeah. So they need, but people need love and they need community, you're yeah. right. And so finding ways to reach them, I mean, you're doing a great job with that. At the beginning of this year, I, one of the, it, well, it wasn't like, it wasn't a thought statement, you know. I didn't think, oh, let's write a statement for the year. It just came out, I was preaching in the year. And it's like, could we make the church, the doors of the church so wide that anybody could walk in? Mm -hmm. I did, like, I, I, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. That's going to mean I'm going to sit down next to someone and I'm not going to be too sure what their gender is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to sit for down sure. with someone and, you know, forget worrying about whether they're going to nick my wife's handbag. You know, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be more messed up than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I and I think we, if Jesus was here now, and we looked at the people that were with him, mm -hmm. probably even I would be offended by who was hanging out with him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's a good thought, man. I, I just I just think like the the church, we just need to claim that space back. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we we've tried to be the moral police for society, and we failed at that one quite dramatically. I know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That hasn't worked. And it's not it's not it's not even like the New Testament. You know, this idea of Christianizing. You know, return England. I'm you know I'm not having a go at England. I, I love it here. I came here by choice. But it, it's England. It's also in other nations where this idea that we get back to the Christian ethics that we had yeah. decades ago. It's a really valuable way to live. Yeah. But it isn't. The Bible, the deal is, you know, like you said, like with Jesus, the guys that hung around him, it's like, uh, you know, Mary comes up, um, there's a lot sleeping with, with uh, you know, uh, yeah. caught in the act of adultery. Yeah, yeah. All the religious guys are ready to stone her. That's the normal church, you know. And if we don't stone, we just kind of look down our nose a little. Yeah. You know, like, well, this, you know, you do realise your behaviour really wasn't. Yeah. And yeah. that's just not in Jesus' heart for yeah, people. Yeah. You've got, we've got, if we try and get people to live 
by Christian standards, yeah. when they haven't encountered him and yeah. been born again, we're missing the whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love it. Why the church doors so wide open. And I don't have to change. So I don't unite with you around my theology. Mm -hmm. I unite with you about my love, around my love for Christ. Yep, yep. Oh, that's a big one. We yeah. wrestle our theology. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to change my theology and you don't have to change yours as long as we've got a love for Christ. Yeah, yeah. You know, and... Um, and, and I, I, I lead my church with the security of, I know what I believe, I, I, you know, my, my, some of my stances on different things are changing as I grow and I'm sure. sure, but those aren't threatened when people come to the church that don't believe in those things. You know what yeah. I mean? Like how they see the woman, but we unite around our love for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and well, that, that touches on unity, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. I did a, um, I'm part of the Churches Together group where we are over there in Staines and, uh, they do a annual kind of a uh, walk of witness, okay. got, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. funny thing, you know, but it's good. You yeah. know, so all the Christians are out and I got to speak this year. So I had seven minutes or something and there's a few hundred people there in the middle of stains. Ali G didn't show, but, oh. you know, <laughs> I was hoping, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had the sunglasses. Oh, right. all <laughs> but, um, and, uh, and, and it was, you know, well received, all went well. And then one of the ministers, so the people are happy enough, but one of the ministers, pulled me aside later would and because and, I made reference to healing okay. and Jesus and that didn't fit in with his theology. Yeah, yeah. So he wants to have a sit down and a chat, which is fine. I yeah, don't yeah. mind having to talk about that. But I agree with you. If, if we allow our particular differences yes. to part us, then you end up with, with not just with small churches, but with no sense of connection. Yeah. And we need one another, man. Yes. So I, I appreciate that. That's and we're all, we're all balls of string. Yeah, and not every knot gets untied before we get to heaven. You know, God, that's deep. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Let me think through what you're saying. There, we're all balls of string. I have not often thought of myself as a ball of string, <laughs> but I'm working on it now. But we're working out our humanity. Absolutely, we're working out our faith with inside of a broken Absolutely. world. Absolutely, and we change too, don't we? Yes. We, we, like you said, we think differently now about some things. Yes. And I think, it, not that we've mentioned this, but that that. I reckon it's very important to see, and it's going to be important in this move of God, where we're, there's been a lot of focus on young people, yeah. and that's important, but there is something about being seasoned and proven yeah. over a period of time. You just, you know, if you're a mechanic on a car and you've done it for 30 years, yeah, yeah. you just know some things. Yeah. I, had a friend, I had a friend who was a really good mechanic in Australia, and uh, we bought this VW Golf. This is a long time ago in Australia, so 80s maybe, and... Uh, and and uh, just had it done, and then something sounded wrong, and uh, and so we took it. He, we got him in the driveway, and uh, put it in reverse, and tried to back. We went about three meters. He hears this sound. He said, oh, "I know what that is. Brake pads are in backwards." Oh, right. Yeah, and they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what he does all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And I think if we if we're not careful, we can. Uh, disregard wisdom, yeah, yeah. The people that are kind of the over fifties. I remember that guy Bob Jones. You might remember he's this prophetic voice, gone home to be with heaven now. Quite an unusual guy in America, but I remember him having a strong prophetic word about the God using the over fifties, and yes. I think that's going to be important. Yeah, we yeah. just have to stay relevant. Yeah, yes, know? yeah. I don't know if you're over fifty. I'm just about there now. No, three years but, uh... to go. <laughs> three years to go. Yeah, but um, you know that's that that. That working together of generations, yeah, and that older, more mature, more seasoned guys that should know things about God and His ways better, not being overbearing, yes, championing younger people, but then younger people being able to say, "I can learn some stuff here instead of yeah, having yeah. to, you know, think I know it all when I'm 25." Yeah, whatever, yeah, you know, so. yeah. Well, it's been great to talk. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should do this again. Absolutely. And, uh, love it in the shed. Yeah, love it in the shed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank should, you for having we me. We should do a bobbin on our surfboards. I should get you on a board soon. Yes. Well, I grew up in Australia, but I've not really ever been a surfer. <laughs> he's, be... he's the surfer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, it's great. Thanks for spending time in the shed and Absolutely, yeah, just my unpacking pleasure. things. You know, really and, appreciate it. You know, have, we, have we spoken about anything, you know, here um, in the last... 25 minutes that's challenged you or you want to know more you can comment in the bottom of the youtube channel or or get my details because you know uh we work we wrestle with all of this stuff we unpack it through conversation and you know i'm, I'm more than happy and i know you would be poor more sure. than happy to unpack this but um i'm excited yeah. you know i'm excited for what 
I'm excited for the season we've been through and I'm excited to see what God wants to do so uh, in our churches and in our nations. Absolutely. And uh, I, I like it's cliche. Every pastor says, oh, we're going to have the, the next greatest move of God. Yeah, yeah. But I think we're due one. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it's been too long. Um, and I, I'm fr not frustrated, but I, I think there's something coming. I think this is our moment. I think there's a reshifting of what church looks like. Um, I think some of us that have been in the backwaters for uh, the last season are suddenly going to see God's influence and blessing coming yep. in through our churches. So thanks for taking the time to watch. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, my and, pleasure. Uh, yeah, Thank look you. forward to catching you with again uh, soon on Shed TV. Lord, this is my shed. It lives by a hedge in my tiny little yard.